Hey, young people. Want to talk about uh, EMP here. Now, most people know what an EMP is. Uh, electromagnetic pulse. It can be delivered in different ways. I mean, lightning is a kind of a form of an EMP. When a lightning strike, the easiest way to understand EMP is like a big lightning strike for the whole country. It just kind of sends out an electric charge that if a lightning hits your house, guess what? It burns out all your electronic circuitry. Um, an EMP basically does that on a large scale. So, and they've been talking uh, about EMP since good grief. I mean, back in the 80s, we were talking about it. And uh, in the military planning and uh, hardening and all that. Hardening EMP protection, it's called hardening. If you want to harden your structure for EMP, there's ways to do it. it I, I'm not sure. I mean, look, what's the likelihood of this happening? Everybody's saying it's probably going to happen. It could happen. Um, it takes a lot of technology to deliver an EMP. You have to get a large nuclear bomb. I think it's like 100 kiloton or something. I mean, it's a, it's a big nuke. And you have to be able to get it in the air over your target. And it has to be accurate. And then you have to explode it. If you explode it too high... It doesn't do as much damage. If you explode it too low, it gives you a smaller target. So it takes a little bit of technology to do this. Uh, Iran, Philippines, I think Pakistan's done some nuclear testing. For one of those places to do that, not very likely. Plus, when they deliver it, we're going to know it because they have to get a, a missile in the air, and our, our defenses are going to pick that up, and we're going to know who sent it and where it came from. Now. China and Russia could do it, so are they the biggest threat? Are they the ones that could come out and do this? Well, they could. I mean, if and buts coconuts, everybody wants to play Russia. Hell, if you ask the Democrats, they'll probably say Russia's done it already, and Trump helped them. But I digress. Uh, EMP, look, I've got some electronics and a metal trash can in my garage. I've got a radio, a solar radio, and a... Uh, couple sets of walkie-talkies, and a few other things that are electronically based inside a metal trash can. Now, the old metal trash can, they used to say, <clears throat> would protect you from an EMP. And then they said, well, it has to be buried. And then they said it has to be grounded. But if you bury it, that grounds it, or that gives it protection. So there's all kind of, over the years, I've heard so many things. And now they're saying that an EMP strike... Uh, some of the technology out there is it's not going to stop every car. Cars have metal shieldings a little bit. Uh, it, it has to be direct. It has to be at a certain strength. So is an EMP likely? Hey, if you watch the news lately, they're kind of adding up that there is a possible EMP uh, threat. I think there's always a threat for anything. be honest, I wouldn't put it past the Democrats to do EMPs over conservative areas and conservative states and then blame it on the Russians. So I don't put anything past the, the lying liberal Democrats, but that I digress. EMPs, uh, should you run around and say the sky is falling? Well, news media is kind of doing that. Uh, should you be aware of it? Yeah. If your phone stops and your radio and you don't get anything on the radio and your other electronics go down, you need to have in the back of your mind possible EMP. What does that tell you to do? Well, you know, if you can get water, if you have electronics, if you can get to the store, if you have cash, if you want to buy things, if electronics go out everywhere, the big problem is medication, fuel, transportation, electronics, and electricity. And when those things go out, that's where they get that 90% of the population is going to die within the first year of a large EMP attack. Is that a scare tactic? I don't know. Um, am I worried about dying with EMP? No. I'm worried about my my quality of living going down because it ain't going to affect me. Again, those who are prepared, those who have firearms to defend themselves against people who are going to be attacking and roaming, those who have guns can take what they need from other idiots who have promoted gun control. So... Is an EMP that devastating? It's going to make life harder. 
it's going to probably make things back, they call to the dark ages, but it's just going to be without electricity and cars maybe. There's a lot of cars that will continue to run. There's one video on YouTube where a guy does an EMP on a phone and he disables a phone with a little bitty EMP. And when he tried it on an iPhone, it wouldn't work. And then when he made his EMP bigger and tried it on the iPhone again, all it did was disrupt it. It stopped the iPhone. It made it shut down and reboot. When you take apart an iPhone, it's got these metal plates and this kind of shielding. And since metal plates shield against a, a, the pulse of the electricity, iPhones do pretty well against an electri uh, electric tool charge. So um, am I saying go get an iPhone? No. Uh, look, if an EMP is going to be taking out things, it's going to take out things. And if your iPhone still works, it doesn't matter if the towers and there's no electricity. It would only take about a billion dollars a year to upgrade and harden our electronics so we wouldn't have to worry about the, the EMP. But you know what? We've got to give $10 billion to Guatemala and Mexico to help them in aid. Even though we just borrowed a, tw a trillion dollars, we borrowed, our government just borrowed a trillion dollars to pay interest on our already 22 trillion, whatever it is, debt. We just borrowed a trillion dollars and we're still giving billions to other countries and they don't want to give five billion for a wall. That's right, I said wall. I know you idiots are out there. Liberals love to redefine stuff. They want it called a barrier. They want it called a fence. They want it called a border security. They want it called anything but a wall. Well, tough. I just call it a wall. Anyway, I digress. EMPs, should you panic? I think you ought to be aware of them. I think you ought to have a little bit of knowledge of them. I think the biggest thing about an EMP is you can't do a whole bunch to stop it, but you can prepare for it. And again, I think the first thing in preparation for survival of anything is guns and ammo. And I know somebody's going to say, well, you guns and ammo ain't going to help you with water, and it ain't going to help you with food. You know what? I think it will. So, um, and if you have food and water and you don't have guns and ammo to keep it, someone else is going to take it. Either large groups or somebody with guns and ammo or somebody with knives, sticks, and, and hammers will take it. It, it. It's it's not rocket science, people. There's people out there that will take things from you. And if you depend on the government or someone else to protect you, well, then you're a fool and you're a victim looking and waiting for a place to happen. So uh, I wanted to cover this because it's kind of been in the news lately. I find it hard to believe there are actual people out there that do not know what an EMP is, who have never heard of it. And I, I think it's kind of like, really? How could you not know about this? To me, it's just been in my vocabulary and in my thought process, like I said, probably since the 70s, but I remember in the 80s specifically doing several things and planning and, and talking about how to protect and harden. Uh, I, I heard there was a new study, and you guys can clear this up in a thing, that They've done testing, and they said even if EMP hits, all cars won't be disabled forever. It's probably just going to disrupt the electronics. Temporarily, it'll shut down. According to some, if you turn your car off and you know the EMP is coming, it won't affect it at all if it's not running. Um, now, a lightning strike, if it strikes your car, I, I don't know if it, if it, you know, would, if it's large enough or if it's a different pulse, um, you know, normally they say you're safe in a car and it goes around, you got rubber tires and you're protected and there's a shroud. No, but, you know, there's there's a lot of if and buts of coconuts on that, too. But anyway, uh, wanted to bring the topic out there in the in the comments. If anybody knows for sure or they have good references, put it in there. I'll put a little section on my website, thinklikeacop.org. And uh, I've got some EMP stuff on there a little bit. But uh, if you have a good PDF or something. Put a link or let me know you have it, and I'll add it to the website on, on my military manuals. Let me go to Think Like a Cop real quick here. And right here it says Military Manuals, and I've got these manuals here that you can download. They're all PDF. And any good EMP, there, hell, there might be some EMP stuff in there. I don't remember what I have in there. And I've got all these blanks to where I can add more. So if you have a good, uh, any PDF for survival or warfare or whatever, um, and you want me to do it, make sure you put it in the email thing, PDF attached for your website or something, so I'll open it. Like I said, I still have 2,000 emails that I haven't even opened, uh, so uh, I try to get to them when I can, but 
sometimes when I check them on my phone, it puts the new ones up front. And if I see a topic that I want to read, I usually pick and choose which from the heading. Um, so anyway, uh, EMP wanted to discuss it and uh, hopefully got something out of it. And in the comments, hopefully read the comments because I got some smart viewers and I usually get pretty good comments. All right, we'll end that there.